lined up in your polar axis hole. Uh, I'm going to show you two ways, this is the simple way, and if you don't have any kind of, of these accessories then it's fine, you can still accomplish it. Uh, the first thing you're going to need naturally is a compass, if you, if you can. Uh, if you can't get one, that's fine. Um, it, the other thing would be a polar axis scope. Again, these are not necessary, but they are very, very helpful in getting this thing aligned pretty much accurately. And of course, last, you'll need is a permanent marker. And this is for basically, once you get the scope, I mean, the mount aligned, you know, you know, facing true north at Polaris, what I do is I basically go at the bottom of the tripod where the little balls of the feet are, and I draw little circles around them. Again, this is if you're on concrete and you're at your own private place where you can actually, you know, do what you need to do. Because once it's actually mounted, I basically take a piece of cardboard, cut out a hole, and then I spray paint over those little holes, and I now know where I can put my tripod mount, so I never have to worry about bringing it back out and trying to find out where Polaris is and what True North is. If you don't have a compass, underneath this mount head is what they call a polar alignment peg. Um, usually on the Celestron mounts, it's usually in between the two main support legs, and that's what has to be facing north at Polaris. So you gotta try to get it the you know, best you can. Now I usually tighten up my azimuth knobs after I get it pretty much north. Um, this way I don't have to move this. And if I have to shift my legs, I will, if, if need be. Now this is already pre-aligned, so I just wanted, I'm just gonna show you how I did it. Um, basically, I take a compass. This one has a level too, a little ball level, so you can tell if your, your mount is uh, level or not. First thing I do is I stick it in the back like that. And I'll show you a picture up close of it. And you make sure it's even. And that is north. And then what I do is I take this compass and I put it in the front. And it's north. At first it wasn't, so I had to shift my legs to the right to actually get it aligned north. But it's actually, this mountain is pretty much straight north uh, aimed at Polaris. After you do that, once all the legs are pretty much in the spot, then I said, that's when I say you need to draw a little circle around the leg. And this way you know where to put the, the tripod, uh, again, the mount, when it comes time, if you have to move it. Now comes the most important part, obviously, and that is getting Polaris aligned up where it needs to be in this polar axis hole. So the first thing you want to do is undo your clutch on this, turn this, and what that does is it now exposes a hole. Oops, I didn't take the cap off. Take the cap off, and now this hole is now exposed, and I'll show you a picture of it uh, up close here in a second. All right. Now, there's two ways of doing this. If you have a polar axis scope, that's great. If not, um, if you ever know what's, if you actually look through this, I'll show you a picture of it. Um, there's an etching on this of the Big Dipper, Cassiopeia, and I think it's called um, Octens. Uh, they're all pretty much etched on the glass in there. So what you do is um, you kind of, Look at your night sky, you go outside, and after you get your try or your mount facing north, you look at the orientation of your scar and the stars at night. And then I do is I take this piece of paper, it's a diagram, but that's the actual same etching that's in here. And I do is I go on my computer and I rotate it to the uh, the orientation of the night sky, what's out there now, you know. And then what I do is I imagine there's a, a cross here inside this hole here, this axis hole. And then what I like to do with that is I get 
Pilar is dead center of that hole, right in the, I mean, literally right on the cross. X marks the spot. Now, I've actually left it like that once, and I did an all-star polar alignment with this thing, and it, it, was, it was actually pretty much aligned, and it was actually perfect. And I had no problems with that. People told me it couldn't be done, and that I was going to get a lot of flop or um, uh, backlash, and my pictures came out fine, so... So what I do is after I did that, and then the next time I did it, what I did is I, again, I looked at the orientation and I rotated the picture on my computer and I came over here and I imagined, you know, where the Polaris had to be at. Because inside here is, there's a circle and then on that circled line is another little tiny circle and that's where Polaris has to be at. So I kind of imagined, I visualized it where it would be on here if I was doing it manually like this. And I just had to adjust my latitude just a little bit and then it was right on. So that's pretty much doing it the visualizing way, you know. If you have a polar axis scope, this is a lot easier, trust me. And what you do is you kind of screw it in. What I do is I go all the way in. Again, I'll show you what this looks like with a picture here. I'll actually add the picture right now. And then I do one full turn rotation and then about a half. Now, why you have to do this is very important actually. And I, believe it or not, when I was first starting out, I didn't know what to do because I had tightened this all the way. And I'm like, well, that's not the right orientation of my sky because I thought maybe that's how they set it up. But I, again, I'm an amateur and I'm a noob. So. so what you do is again, like you do with that piece of paper, you're turning it. You go outside and you look at the night sky and I know Big Dipper is usually to the right, Cassiopeia is to the left. So what I do is I turn this until, and see that's where my, my the orientation of my sky is and that's where Polaris is where it should be. Now since this one's not illuminated, someone asked me, well how do you see it at night? Well when you look at the front hole here, there's a pretty big size hole. Uh, what I do is I take a little, one of my USB flashlights, which I don't have it over here, it's over there. Uh, but I put a, a piece of red film over that and I basically shine the red light in there. And each time I make a little adjustment, I'm mean, usually with this being north and my uh, latitude being set properly, all I usually have to do is adjust the, the azimuth just, just a fraction of an inch sometimes. Um, and then it goes right into a little hole and that's pretty much it. And then once it's there, I make sure everything's locked down. I put my weights on, I put my telescope on, and then I start either my all-star alignment or I do the, usually I do a two-star alignment with two additional stars, uh, and then it comes out perfectly. And I can usually track up to about close to three minutes. Um, if, if I start to go over that a little bit, I start to see a little drift uh, here and there. I mean, it's very minute, but I am going to be getting a, um, a guide scope uh, next month, and so hopefully that will fix that problem. But there you go, and that's pretty much the basic. Making sure this is all facing north. Um, if you can mark your ground, that's great. If not, uh, then you just got to keep doing this every night, which is, that's, again, where the compass would come in handy. So if you're going to have to keep doing it every night, I would definitely get one of these because they're only like eight bucks and, and that would be pretty much it. So, Well, with that being said, that's how you do a, um, basically you get the polar axis alignment to facing north at Polaris. And then the rest is uh, just doing your uh, alignment with the star, your star alignments. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and please subscribe and share my channel and clear skies.